Okay, here we have a very beautiful old piece. This is an old Venturi water meter, first used between 1915 and 1968. So it was used up quite recent times. We use it as a timepiece, has a clock face on top and does keep quite good time. It's probably worth its weight in gold, if not in brass alone. Here we have the uh, what we call the MCCs or the motor control centres. This is really the equipment which will oversee or manage this operation at the Mount Gambers Blue Lake. A little later we'll go into more detail as to the role this equipment plays. To demonstrate how we get water from Mount Gambier's Blue Lake, we know we have water storage tanks at Potter's Point and Keegan Drive. Those tanks have electronic level indicators installed in them and will detect when the water level drops. When the water level drops to a predetermined level, it will send an electronic pulse back to the MCCs in this building, all the electrical equipment we saw in the other room a little earlier. So what we'll do from here is push the, the green button on this model and demonstrate to you how we get water from Mount Gambier's Blue Lake. So what we've done now is simulated a drop in the water level in the tanks and you can see the message via the red lights being sent down to the MCCs in this building. Now once the message is recorded by the MCCs in this building it is then transferred down to the number two switchboard. Once that number two switchboard receives the message it will tell the pumps to prime. Once the pumps are primed they'll then commence pumping of water to the water storage tanks so we can maintain the supply at all times. Now because we have water in the tanks at all times, water is then being gravity fed via a pipeline to the houses of Mount Gambier, so all the householder has to do, go along to their tap, turn it on and they instantly have water. And that's how Mount Gambier gets its water supply. Now the shaft which we're travelling in was dug out in the 18. This is the original bore shaft which used to pump water from, so basically this is a well. In the 1960s we installed the lift in the shaft, dug a tunnel through, married them up and it was used as a maintenance way for the people from the South Australian Water Corporation. However, we've since commandeered it for the use of the tours. Much easier to get down here as you may appreciate. Now you should notice a large counterbalance go past, don't panic, that's just a weight balancing the weight of the lift, let you know you're halfway there. You also notice some large steel rusty brackets sitting in the wall. They held the steam power jack pumps in place in the early days. Also there are smaller rusty brackets which held the ladder system so blokes had climbed down to service those steam power jack pumps in those early days. We're only travelling 30 metres or 100 feet although the shaft in its entirety used to go 42 metres or 150 feet. It used to go right into the water table, obviously so I can get water out. No longer required for that since blocked off at the 30 metre mark but the shaft itself is 8 feet in diameter took five months to dig, two and a half months to stone back up. A damn good effort considering it was all done manually. Here we are in the, in the tunnel down uh, from the lift shaft and this tunnel was completed in 1966. They started from the end as to where we'll exit. When they put this tunnel through they wanted to meet up the shaft which the lift now travels in. Obviously they did do that but only two inches or 50 millimetres off centre which is not a bad effort considering they had no lasers in those days. Okay here we are down by the water's edge and, and this is where we'll talk to you about the colour of the lake and to be honest there are many theories why this lake changes colour. However, I'll share with you the most recent work done. Now, we know the lake will turn to a beautiful blue around the middle of November and maintain that blueness through to around March the following year, depending on how the season performs. So that is essentially our summer period. We'll also notice a lot of our water is fed through limestone, so there's a lot of calcium or calcium carbonate saturated in the water. Little microscopic crystals you cannot see with a naked eye. Now, according to Dr Nick Tarot, What's occurring is during winter, calcium carbonate will become suspended in the upper layer of water, causing water to appear cloudy or grey. During summer, a change will occur which will allow the calcium carbonate to settle or sink or maybe precipitate to the bottom, just leaving pure water. The colour of pure water is blue. That's why the lake is blue and that's why you do not see a lot of blue waterways around these days. There's not a lot of pure water around. Now to get a handle on this, 
During winter, when the lake is grey, the visibility in the water is around 9 metres due to the suspension of calcium carbonate in that upper layer. During summer, when the lake is blue or clear or pure, depending on how you wish to interpret that, the visibility is around 17 metres. So there's quite a marked difference. Winter versus summer, blue versus grey, best time to view the lake is in the height of summer, particularly around December, January, February, and the lake will turn to the most brilliant turquoise blue you could ever imagine. Okay, here we are down at the pumping station, and this is where we'll set up a demonstration of water pressure going through water mains around the district. What we'll do is send a jet of water through a monitor. We expect this stream to go about 60 metres across the lake, depending on where the breeze is coming from. Now off that stream, we will get some mist. If the sun shines brightly in the right direction, we sometimes get a rainbow effect through that mist, although I'm not going to promise you that today, but uh, we will set this demonstration up. The, the pressure demonstrated is around 80 metres head or 120 pounds per square inch. It's quite significant. So this is just water coming from the Potter's Point tank down a pipeline and back out to the Blue Lake. So there's no water wasted in this demonstration, but just for your enjoyment. so much about the Blue Lake in our own backyard. Gary, thanks so much for showing us around this morning. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure and I've actually learned something. Great. There you Thank go. You. Thank you.